Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another uh, SU Web Development Watts 3020 project walkthrough. So this project is called the Browser Game, and specifically it's a tic-tac-toe game. So it's uh, not that cutting edge in terms of video games, but it's pretty fun to build, and it's a nice project that's designed to really help you practice um, event handling. And so uh, we've been reading about event handling and working with event handling, or talking about event handling uh, this week, and so we're going to be working on a project that focuses on event handling. Um, so. I think it's easiest to get an idea of what's going on here by looking at a little pre-baked example. So here is a working finished version of the project and this is what it looks like. You you come here at first and it's we heart tic-tac-toe and you can see that um, all of the squares have different hearts and stars in them and I can click but nothing happens. Um, I click start game and it says it's hearts move, select an open spot on the game board, so I can come and take the middle spot because that's a good move, and then it switches to star move, um, so star can block, and then heart can go, and star can go, and we can work it out until what usually happens, which is the good old uh, hearts one. <laughs> Or we can make sure that there is a oh hearts one again. <laughs> uh, we can make sure that there's a draw. Uh, this is one of those games that when you're testing it, it's hard to actually play it uh, smartly because you have to kind of remember that you're playing both players. So <laughs> that is a little bizarre. Oh, now Star's gonna win. Oh no, heart one because it went diagonal. Ah, all right. Anyways, um, so that's what the game sort of looks like. Uh, we can make sure that we get a uh, a nice draw here, and that will definitely allow us to sh show that we're going to um, be able to handle that condition as well. So here we go. This is the way that the whole game works. You've seen me play through it a few times now. You, one player selects, it switches between players, and then you either win or you, or you hit a draw. And once you've done that, you can hit play again, and basically the whole page reloads and you can start the game again. Um, so that's it. It's not that crazy of an application um, and it's not that much but you know all of these little kinds of games have sort of a lot to them so um, let's go ahead and get started on this the way that we typically do uh, we're going to fork and into our personal area here so that we can work with it in our personal development area and we are then going to clone it down to wherever our local development area is. And when we do that, we will see that we have these files. Um, if we run um, uh, our web server now, uh, it will um, show us the page. Uh, but first I'm gonna, before I run the web server, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my files in Sublime here. Um, so that I can check out the files and then I'm going to uh, run my simple HTTP server here so that I can show you that when you first download it this is not the pre-baked version this is the um, you can see that we still have the same layout on the beginning because that doesn't require any um, JavaScript you're given all this HTML and CSS but we can't start the game and if we look in our inspector here uh, we will see that um, that in fact we have invalid unexpected tokens because our our main.js file is not yet uh, filled up with good JavaScript. It's got a bunch of to-dos in it and some stub JavaScript that we can build around. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But um, I want to read through this readme with you first. So you saw how the game basically worked. Uh, it's tic-tac-toe. Two players play it. They take turns. Um, one player goes and it becomes the next player's turn. Every time a player moves, the game has to basically figure out um, a few things. So let's talk a little bit about how the game is put together. Um, the primary component is going to be a tic-tac-toe class. Um, the tic-tac-toe class will refer to players, which we will break out into their own player class. 
Uh, we're going to use events to control this. So we're going to be looking for DOM content loaded events, and we're going to be looking for win and draw events. Um, and uh, then we're also going to be watching for the events when a tile is clicked, and we're going to handle that move um, with a handle move function. So looking at the actual game logic, um, this is what's going to happen in each uh, in each game. So the player is going to click a start game button. The game board is going to be initialized and the game state will be initialized. Uh, the first player will be prompted to make a move. Um, the player will select a tile to claim. The player's move will be saved into the game state. So the game's going to be keeping in memory sort of what's happened. So we're going to have to save that move. Um, then the player's move will be analyzed to see whether or not that is a move that wins the game. If the player's move is a winning move, then the game is going to end by showing the win screen. And if it's not a winning move, then the game is going to check to see if there's any more moves left. Now, we only have nine tiles, so there can only be nine moves in a game before we know that there's no more moves. It could be that a game is already doomed to be a draw before that, uh, but we're not going to worry about that case for now. We're going to make people play all nine moves. Um, if there are no more possible moves, then the game is going to end by showing the draw screen. And if there are still some possible moves, then the game is going to switch players. And the next player will be prompted to move, and the logic in these steps 5 through 10 will be repeated. So the player's move will be saved in the game state, and then it will be analyzed, and the rest of the logic will take place. So that's, that's basically how the game is going to think through making all of these moves. Now, uh, we will see in the code sort of how things are stored. We're going to have a game state, which will be a little array of arrays that will map to all nine tiles on the board. So you notice that there's nine null values here. Eventually, we want to fill those up with the name of the player that has taken them, or we could even be saving a reference to the exact player object in there. Um, either way would work fine. Um, but this setup will allow us to access each tile using an XY coordinate. So we can basically say that the top left tile of our grid would be game state 0, 0, and the middle tile of the grid would be game state 1, 1. So remember that they are 0 index, so our, our, our columns are 0, 1, 2, and our rows are 0, 1, 2 also. So <clears throat> that's how that goes. Um, we will also be um, using this win states array of arrays to, to evaluate whether or not people have won or whether or not each move is a winning move um, by seeing um, whether or not the game state maps to a winning state. So if a single player token is in all three of these tiles, which would be 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2, and that would constitute the top row of the tic-tac-toe grid, then um, then they win because they've gotten three across the top row. Um, this win state, the next one is three across the middle row, and then three across the bottom row, and then we go, and then it, it iterates through. So these are all of the possible winning states of tic-tac-toe. This is why tic-tac-toe is not that difficult of a game, because it's not that hard to memorize all of these winning states and make sure that you prevent them on each move. So um, theoretically, uh, two people playing tic-tac-toe who are paying attention uh, should never actually have a winning game. It should always be a draw. Um, nonetheless, uh, our important game events, like we said before, the DOM content loaded event, the win event, the draw event and the click event on the tile object. So those are the, the events that, um, that you'll really be focused on creating in the code itself. So that is the, um, as the basic, you know, structure of the game. Now, the uh, basic requirements of this game are um, to create a player class, and um, that player class will accept actually a token parameter. I will edit this file so that when you get it, the instructions will be correct. So a token parameter. Um, complete the creation of the tic-tac-toe class and set up um, the game board using um, DOM manipulation commands, initialize the values to count the moves, add all the event listeners, create the methods to handle the game logic, including recording the moves, switching players, and so forth, and then allow the player to begin a game by clicking the Start Game button, and add event listeners that will handle the win and draw events also. So that is um, that is how to do it. Now, for stretch goals, there's a ton that you could do with this game. Um, and, you know, you can um, you could use this 
this project actually has Bootstrap and jQuery already added to it. So if you wanted to, you could even make it so that, like, for example, your windscreen could actually be a Bootstrap modal. Right now it's not, but you could very easily switch it to be that. Um, so that could be interesting. You could uh, restyle the game so it fits your design concept. You can choose whatever uh, icons out of the Glyph Icons library you want to use, or if you want to, you can download something like Font Awesome and add that in and use those icons too, so you could really allow people to pick all different kinds of icons. Um, you could uh, uh, you know, make it so that instead of reloading the HTML when they click play again, it actually um, just starts the game over again instantly with no reload. Um, you could create like a call draw button so that players could essentially resign when um, they know that it's a draw. They can hit call draw and, and it'll end in a draw. Um, you could have have it randomly pick which player goes. So we're going to code it so that player one goes all uh, first each time. Um, it, you could easily add a randomization in there that would do like a coin flip to determine which player starts the game. Um, you could get a little more advanced and uh, enhance the logic for the check for winner method Method, and um, you could determine that there's no possible winning moves and if that's the truth then you could just call the game as a draw without having anybody press a button or anything or without having them play through the remaining moves. Um, you could also add a player profile form you, so that you could store player name for example and show the player's name uh, when they move or you could um, you could even if you really want to get super advanced I didn't even list this on the stretch goals but you could um, you could change either the dimensions of the board or you could change the number of players that are involved or you could change both and that would be really require a more much more significant change you'd have to change the win states and you would probably have to change the way that the game state is initialized if you change the size of the board but you know it could be it could be a really interesting project so if you're really craving a huge challenge um, you can even go that far so uh, keep that in mind and um, and that is the overall sort of vision of the project. So when you get into um, the files here, which I will um, show you in the old uh, sublime text. <laughs> um, let's see here. We, we have our... Uh, let's kill this and open up. There we go. Um, so as we um, look at these files you can see that this is what we're starting out with here. We're starting with a, um, a, a sample, you know, the main.js has a bunch missing here. So we're going to have to create the class called player. Um, we're going to go through this. We're going to set up this.player1 and player2. Um, we're going to initialize several properties used to track the game progress. So we're going to initialize all these properties. We're going to um, set up a bunch of DOM elements here that are going to uh, hold the different parts of the screen that we're going to manipulate throughout the game. Um, we're going to, you know, we have our game state and we have our win states here. And we have a check for winner that does the check for the winning condition. So we don't have to figure out that logic. Although if you're really into a challenge, you could just delete this right away. Start from a, a blank uh, main.js file and that would be another advanced stretch challenge if you wanted. But um, but anyways, we'll, we'll, all that we really need to do inside of this is to actually dispatch the events. So either the win event or the draw event, we need to create those events and dispatch them. Um, so we'll get a little practice creating an event and dispatching our own events. Um, we will uh, fill in to record a move. So we'll need to record some data into this system and everything here. Um, we will handle switching a player. Um, so that won't be too tough. We'll do a little conditional that'll see which player is it and switch it to the opposite one. Um, we will then uh, set up the tile listeners. So we'll have to um, create a little something that will set up the, t the tile listeners there. And then we will um, uh, show the win screen um, or show the draw, draw screen. So that would be just a little function to add a show class to those, um, to those elements in the HTML. And then we'll do a bigger setup board function um, that will uh, need to clear all the content from the game board and then redraw everything. So we're actually going to have to make a bunch of DOM elements and add them to the to the file and everything, um, to the HTML file. Um, then we will initialize the move prompt when we kick off a game. And we'll provide a start method that will actually handle the logic um, to start the game. So that's, that's all of the tic-tac-toe class. So that is the main game class. But outside of this class, um, we actually need to 
add a few items as well. So we need an event listener on the document to handle the DOM content loaded event so that we can actually start the game. And inside that listener, we're going to um, add an event to the start button that will respond. So once we know that the DOM is loaded, then, then it's safe to add the event to the start button. We can add the start event to the start button, and that's that's actually the handler that will um, that will handle calling the start method on the game object. So um, that will be good. Then we'll add an event listener on the document for the win signal and an event listener on the document for the draw signal. And that will, again, just cue the game to actually show um, the win screen or to show the draw screen, just using those basic methods that we're defining up above. Finally, um, we have a little function that has been provided here that is the handle move function. So this function is going to get called from within the event listener that is on each tile. And that event listener is going to call handle move. It will pass in the event. And then um, basically handling the move means recording the move, checking for a winner, and then switching players. So those are the three steps of actually handling a move. So all of the logic needed to make a move happen is in these three uh, individual methods that we are going to define up above here. So that's basically it. If we if we take a quick peek at the uh, at the CSS, we have Bootstrap included here, like I said, but um, all of the custom styles for this project are just right here. And there are a few, but it's not it's not that many. Um, then if we look at the HTML file here, we can see that uh, we have a basic HTML structure defined. Um, we are using the bootstrap grid to actually make the, the tic-tac-toe grid, so that's why we have bootstrap included. Um, and it's worthwhile to note that when we're adding um, icons to the tiles and things like that, we need to be using the glyph icon uh, uh, style classes. So um, so we'll, we'll have to make sure that whatever you choose maps. Um, so you might not have empty versions, for example, of the different icons that you're using. That's okay. You could just show a mixture of the icons that you're going to use in your version if you're going to switch away from hearts and stars. Um, you know, you could do the classic X's and O's. You could do all, all sorts of different things. So, So that is the basic setup of the files, and that is how um, that is all the requirements for the project, and we can see um, from here how we want the um, game to progress. So we can easily uh, see exactly what we're doing um, in terms of, of playing the game and what we want to see in terms of the, the end result of the code that we're going to write. So this is the place where if you want to work this project by yourself without any help, you should probably pause the video and go do it. Um, another good strategy is to watch the video and then uh, not just code along, but watch it and then pause it after the end and then go back and try to work as much as you can before you have to start watching again. That's another really good way to do it. Or if you are feeling really uncomfortable with all of this, you're welcome to code alongside it and uh, work it out so that you get a working version up and running. And then you could always reclone it to a different directory or delete your work and redo it again and try to work it a little more on your own each time until all of the logic and all of the different details start to make a lot, a lot more sense. So um, feel free to work however you would like to work. Um, I'm, I'm certainly open to all different kinds of approaches. I'm going to go ahead and continue here and show you the rest of the solution. So I'm going to work this entire project so that you can see how it all comes together and uh, what code is needed in order to achieve that working version of the game that we've been looking at. Okay? Good. So to get into the editing of this JavaScript, <laughs> let's um, go ahead and jump into this main.js file. So uh, we basically can just work right through these to-dos and make it come together. So the very first one is to create a class called player. So we know how to make a class and we know that there should be a constructor in here that should look for a parameter called token and it should uh, set this dot token as a property of the class. So I imagine that that means this dot token equals token. Um, so that's what we're going to type there. We'll go ahead and save that. Um, 
then we have our uh, tic-tac-toe game class that we have to work on. So we can see um, the first thing to do is set up this.player1 and this.player2. Uh, they need to be in new um, player class instances. We may set the token to anything that corresponds to a glyph icon. Um, so, okay. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and say um, in this constructor, this.player1 equals new player. And for this token, let's use something different than um, what we uh, what we de what we did before. Let's go ahead and go a little more traditional, and let's use the remove sign um, for this one. And then this dot player two, we'll make a new player object, and we'll use unchecked. And that's sort of the closest that you can get to the sort of circles and knots, you know, crosses and O's, or X's and O's, right? Um, so we'll go ahead and, uh, and and have that there like that. Then we'll um, uh, create, initialize these properties that will be used to uh, track the game set. So this dot current player, that is going to equal null. That's okay. We basically just have to follow the guide and the to-do here. Um, but again, if you were looking for more of a challenge, you could definitely uh, start with a blank file because there's nothing provided for you in this file. It is purely, um, it is is all you. The, the only thing that's provided really are a couple of tiny functions, which again, if you were up to the challenge, you could certainly um, figure those out yourself. So uh, we then need to grab all of our DOM elements out. So the first thing that we're going to say is this dot start prompt equals document dot query selector start dash prompt. And I'm going to actually uh, copy and paste because I think it might be easier to just say move prompt is move prompt um, and this dot uh, current player token is the player token all of these are IDs so we know there's only one on the page so we can just use document dot query selector this dot current or sorry game board equals document dot query select sometimes I just have to type it out and we'll paste for this so win screen is going to be win dash screen uh, winner token is going to be winner dash token and draw screen is going to be draw dash screen so so hopefully we didn't make any typos there um, we'll have to have to kind of figure keep an eye on that and make sure that we didn't make any typos in there uh, definitely we have the game state defined and the win states defined and that's it so that's that's pretty great um, that's definitely uh, uh, a good chunk of the initialization. It looks like we're basically all done with that. So then the next stuff that we have is the check for winner, record move, switch player. All of this is really good, but I actually think that it's best to jump down here because we know that what's going to really kick off this game is going to be um, this event listener for the DOM content loaded event, and then running this start uh, method. So maybe if we could get this going, we could actually kind of see more of our code work as we write it. So I'm going to recommend go ahead 
and jump down. Now, you know, the file is organized the way that it is. Things are kind of put together so that it's like up here is the stuff that, that we're going to define and use later on. So we're defining the player and the tic-tac-toe class. That code isn't run directly when the file is loaded. The first code that actually gets run would be this code that we're going to write here. So we're going to add an event listener to the document object that will watch for the DOM content loaded event sing signal. So that is, means... Um, that we're going to say um, document dot add um, event listener and the event listener that we're looking for is DOM content loaded and then we're going it says that the listener should execute an anonymous function to handle the event so that means that this is an anonymous function one that we just define in line here I'm going to add my little semicolon at the end of that because technically this is a statement. Um, but inside of this function here, I need to do a few things. And, and what we can see is that um, uh, this all needs to happen inside of this function. So I'm actually just going to paste it right in here so that I can keep track of it. So inside the event handler, perform the following steps. Select the start button element. So um, and save it in a variable called start button. So okay, so let start button equal document dot query selector, and that's going to be pound start button again because that's also an ID for just that single button. Um, then create an event listener on the start button element. Uh, so start button dot add event listener. And then um, it's going to listen for the click event. So I'm just going to type click there. And it's going to execute another anonymous function. So that I'm going to define that just like I did above. And I'll put in my curlies there, put a blank line, and put another semicolon after this. And then this stuff needs to happen all inside of that start button. So I'm actually going to go ahead and paste that in there just so that I have it right there. So inside the start button event listener instantiate a new instance of the tic-tac-toe class and save it as a variable called game okay so let's say um, we, we might need access to this game in other places so let's let's initialize game outside here and then let's say game equals new tic-tac-toe right and it looks like that's all that I need to do there and then I need to call the start method of the game object I just created so game dot start that should work because I, I initialized game out here so that I know that all this other stuff I don't want to initialize game with a let statement inside of here because then it would only exist inside of this event listener it wouldn't exist for the rest of the of the app and I know that I'm going to have to control some other things uh, down here Right. So, so for now, I think that this is all set to actually start the game. So if I go in here into game.start, it says I should create a new game board um, by calling this.setup board, but I just want to see if this is actually going to work. So I'm going to put just a console log in here that just says starting game. And so that'll always let me know when I click start is it actually starting the game. Um, so if I go back here, and I refresh my page here. I'm going to get rid of this pre-baked one. Um, if I click the Start button, I hope that I see a console log that says Starting Game. And I don't. <laughs> so why not? Well, if we look in the console here, we can see that it's telling us that we have an invalid or unexpected token on line 167. Oh, and there's an extra backslash there. And you can see that it shows us that right here. And it takes us to the sources view to show us that. We can always look at our files there. So it looks like maybe at some point in time, um, I just uh, accidentally typed um, an extra backslash. Uh, that'll happen. <laughs> I'll tell you. So, and that'll break your code. So let's see if, um, if this works now. So we see... Um, game code starting, DOM content has loaded. So we see our our console.logs um, that we have in the code there 
um, have executed. And if we hit start game, we can see starting game um, has executed. So we have our game code starting console log, our DOM content has loaded console log, and then our starting game console log. This is really helpful when you're dealing with complex logic like this to log out the states of your game um, so that you know that you have, uh, you know, sort of gotten it going properly. Um, it's really, really critical. So, so now um, we can flesh out this start function uh, we can say um, create a new game board by calling this dot setup board. So that's um, that's very straightforward, just like that. Um, and then this dot initialize move prompt. That's that's all that it takes um, to to do those. Let's go ahead and drop some console logs in here though. Um, that just say what they're doing so that before we get any logic in here we can know that they're actually our code is actually going to the right places it's actually executing um, in the right thing so let me just uh, console.log setting up game board someday I'll learn how to type properly so um, so now if we refresh this and um, we hit start game, we see starting game, setting up game board, initializing move prompt. And so that's the right order for everything, right? So good, we're, we're keeping on track there. So now we can, um, we can start working through all of these things. Um, and of course, this file is uh, really big and kind of ugly. So I'm going to get rid of some of these to do's really fast. We should, we should not leave these to do's in here. We should really replace them with better comments that are going to help other people get into our code and understand it better. Um, so we know all of those things um, are there. Uh, maybe we want to still in DOM content loaded event hand listener. And um, start button listener is probably small enough that we don't need to add a comment there. Um, so we'll tidy up our code just a little bit and um, and we can then get right into this so we, we don't need to see that anymore we know that we're doing that we know that we're doing that um, we know that uh, this method handles logic to create a new game we keep that there just to let people know although start is pretty self-explanatory let's go through this setting up the board I think this is one of the toughest parts is just getting this board all set up so the first thing that we need to do is clear all of the content from the existing this dot game board element so that means this dot game board dot inner HTML equals nothing that's that's what we want to do there right so if we succeeded then we should be able to go back to our browser here refresh hit start game and now we see the game board just totally disappears so that's that's what we actually want right um, so good we cleared all of the content then we have to draw the game board by using a loop to create two rows or to create rows with tiles in them we want to create the same structures we see in the index.html file so if we open up the index.html file what you can see here is that we have the game board itself is a column of a row already and it's a it's it's a column that's going to take up the the two-thirds at the right of the screen um, within it it has three rows so we're gonna to have to loop through to create a new row and we're gonna to have to do three times of a loop through there to create a new row and then for each new row we then have to create three new columns and in each of those columns we need to create a tile and so it needs to, um, it needs to, uh, uh, you know, look like that, right? Um, so let's let's try to write this. So we're going to do a for loop, and this for loop, um, the counter variable should be called i. So for let i equals zero i is less than 3 and i++ plus plus. 
that's going to give us a loop that is going to execute three times. And all of this other stuff down to here is all inside of the for loop. So I'm going to paste that stuff inside of there. And I'm going to go ahead and tuck this up so that I see um, first for loop ends here. Just just to remind me of that when I get down here, because there's going to be a lot more code that goes in here. So, so the first thing that I need to do is create a new div element called new row. OK, so we'll say let new row equal document dot create element div that works set a class attribute on new row to row so that's set attribute class row and that's that is um, all of that um, now I need to create another for loop to make the columns that contain the tiles. So this for loop should also execute three times and the counter variable should be called j. So, all right, let's write that. So let j equals zero. j is less than three and j plus plus. That plus plus iterates it one number up each loop and we're going to go down here and this says the f second for loop ends there so all of this code is supposed to be inside of this second for loop so I'm just gonna paste it in there and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, I'm gonna say second for loop ends here so that uh, so that I, I remember that that's what that that's what that curly brace is for. It's the end of the second for loop. So it's okay to put these kinds of reminders in your code, especially when you have loops that have a few lines in them. You know, if they get more than a couple lines long, it's worthwhile. So, um, so here I need to create a new div element called new call. So that's basically just like I did before. Um, let new call equal document dot create element div. And then set the class att attribute on new call to call xs3. So new call dot set attribute class call xs3. OK. And then I'm going to create a new span element called new tile. So I say let new tile equal document dot create element span and I'm going to set the class attribute on new tile equal to the placeholder styles okay so new tile dot set attribute class is going to equal to token glyph icon glyph icon question sign so as long as that matches this set of classes here, then I should have my tiles that have a good, um, a good little you know question mark in a circle or whatever there, right? So then I need to set the data x attribute on the new tile element equal to i, okay? So um, that means new tile dot um, new tile dot now I know that when I want to attribute when I want to access the HTML data attributes I use the data set um, property on the DOM element so if I say data set dot X equals I that will in the end in my HTML that will come out as um, you know zero the first loop one the second loop to the third loop right um, and then here I'm supposed to set the data y attribute on the new tile element equal to j. So new tile dot data set dot y equals j. So this is going to set it according to the second loop. So for each iteration through the loop, so we'll have i 
you know, when it'll be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and then the big loop will go, and it'll be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and that's, that's how these um, values are going to get um, modulated, right? So then we're going to append new tile as a child to new call. So you got to read that a couple times maybe. That means that we're going to say new call dot append child new tile. Okay? And then we're going to append new call as a child to new row. Okay? So new row dot append child new call. So that's the second loop all finished and <clears throat> the, the the second loop is going to end there. So what we're going to end up with is that this new row is going to have three columns and each of those columns is going to have a tile inside of it. And that's um, that's what's going to be created there. Now then we're going to append the new row element to the game board as a child element. So that means this dot game board dot append child new row. So that should append everything um, to the game board. And that's actually the end of drawing the game board. So at this point in time, if we hit start, we should see a game board full of question marks, which will um, that will show up. So, so not just the empty game board, but the game board full of question marks. So let's go ahead and refresh our HTML and give it a shot and see if we succeeded at, at, at building that start, um, that setup board properly there. So we'll hit start game and we can see our, our little uh, question marks there. So cool. Um, they look a little funky and I think that the reason for that is that actually uh, in our main.css, well, what is going on here? So if we inspect, we can see that we have token, glyph icon, glyph icon, question sign, data X and data Y. That's cool. Data X and data Y there. That's cool and data X and data Y there, that all works. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, but why isn't it um, the same size as the other ones? Let's refresh. I bet we could figure this out. If we look here and we inspect, we see this tile class is applying. And when we start the game and we inspect, ah, oh, we have this token instead of tile. I think that um, there was a, a typo. <laughs> so let's fix that. Um, I'll fix this in the instructions so that in the future it says tile there. Um, for now, though, let's just fix that. That's how we, we just debugged that. So that's good. Um, I like leaving these things in because I think it's really important to see that even when you're experienced and even when you've been through something a few times, you can get yourself turned around. You can get yourself kind of a little bit out of sorts and everything. But if you stay patient and you just look closely at what's happening, you can figure it out. And here we go. Now we know we, we were missing that tile class, which should have been there instead of token. And... Um, and that's okay. Now we've got it all there. So that's good. I'll be sure to update that in the in the source files, but um, in the meantime, in this video, you got to see a little debugging there. So hopefully if something like that happens um, while you're working on your game, then, um, then you can, uh, you know, approach it in a little better way. So um, now that we know that we got the game board built right and we fixed up our little issue there with the placeholder style, we can, um, we can then... Uh, do this uh, final portion, which is to call the setup tile listeners to add event listeners to all those tile elements. So it's easy to call that 
that's all that it takes. And let's go ahead and add a little um, console log here so that we know we know that um, we got to the right spot of our logic. And then um, let's just refresh and we'll give this one more test and we hope that we see that um, console log that says um, setting up tile listeners. Perfect. So, um, so now what we can do is work on setting up these tile listeners. So that means that um, we can uh, we first have to select all of the tile elements and so um, we will be able to do that by saying um, let tile elements it says that we it wants it in the tile elements variable so we'll do this let tile elements equals document dot um, query selector all and we'll be looking for everything with the tile um, so that's why it's really important actually to switch that class to tile so um, we'll be looking for everything with the tile class so then um, we will add a click event listener to each tile that will call the handle move function whenever a tile is clicked so let's say um, tile for tile of tile elements we're going to then loop through all of the tile elements and each one will come in as tile so we'll say tile dot add event listener now this is going to be a click listener and the function that we want it to call is handle move and that's all that we have to say we're not actually calling the handle move function so we don't have to use the parentheses or anything we're just giving it the name of the function and the event listener is going to actually call that function and pass in um, the event and because this is not an anonymous function this is a named function all we have to do is give it the name of the function here so if we go down to handle move um, we've got stuff in here um, record move check for winner and switch player let's just add some console.log statements um, handling player move that that will be useful at first and then we know with record move check for winner and switch player um, record move we'll just say recording move switch player we'll say console.log switching player and check for winner we'll say console.log checking for winner just so that we know that all these all this logic has been hit successfully so that's um That's, that's super good, um, but remember that before we were actually working through this start thing, and so we finished setup board and we got into the setup tile listeners, we got a little bit distracted, but we really want to initialize the move prompt so that we know who's supposed to be moving, and that's really important too because in order to handle the move we have to have a current player, and right now we don't have a current player that's been set, so initializing this move prompt is the thing that sets up the current player. So, um, so what we can do is we can... Uh, first of all it says um, we can work through these to do's inside of the initialize move prompt so it first says hide the start prompt element by setting the class attribute to hidden so we can say okay this dot start prompt dot set attribute class hidden seems great okay then um, it says remove the hidden class from the this dot move prompt element and if we look here um, we can see the start prompt and the move prompt and we can see that the only class that's on the move prompt is hidden so if we just empty out the class attribute that will effectively remove that hidden element so we can just say that's it just class nothing and that will just remove the hidden class which will then show the element 
um, then we can see that it's set current player equal to this dot player one. So this dot current player equals this dot player one. It's not any more complicated than that. It's just the current player is just going to track which player object is currently um, making the move. So now if we refresh, we should actually see this thing change when we click start game. So we see our board there. We hit start game and we go here and then um, we have uh, tile is not defined um, at setup tile listeners. Um, so let's let's figure out what exactly is going wrong with that. Uh, for this, let's. Um, oh, I see what it is. So normally I would say um, let's make sure that tile elements has some content in it. So let's put a little breakpoint there and um and if we uh click the button again it will execute the start button handler again which will then um run through this function and stop when it gets to this line and we can actually see that in tile elements we have nine tile elements there and we can see that all of these tile elements have been selected successfully so that's good um but the problem here is actually that uh, tile itself has not been declared as a variable and when you write your for of statements you need to make sure that you use a let in front of that variable name so what I'm going to do is uh, go back here in um, my setup tile handlers setup tile listeners and I'm just going to make sure that that's actually declared properly so tile had not been declared or used previously. Um, I could declare it out here, but I really only need it inside this for loop. So I'm going to use it, the let tile of tile elements. And that, that's really the syntax for the for of loop. So I made a syntax error there. So now I've removed that, um, that breakpoint by clicking. You click to apply it and click to remove it. And then I'm just going to hit refresh. And we're going to hit start game. And now I see that it's uh, hearts move. So we will um, select an open spot on the board. And you can see that when I clicked that, it said recording move. It said handling player move, recording move, checking for winner, reviewed move one, switching player. So good. Um, we, we haven't written the code to make those things happen, but we know that at least things are... Um, things are kicking off properly. So we're going to continue working through all of these parts. And this is also where it really does pay off to remove these to-dos because they're going to get a little bit confusing for us if we leave them all in here. Um, so we have that all, all taken care of. These things are all taken care of. And We'll just get rid of these to-dos that are all taken care of. And all right, and we've got that to-do gone. And this to-do gone, and this one too. So but look. You can always you can always make a mistake and and push the wrong button. So make sure that you you know don't <laughs> don't miss anything. Um, save your code and then rerun it again to make sure that you don't get any syntax errors that you didn't get before. Because whenever you do a big delete like that, um, we see that we still have that going. We need to make sure that all of those things uh, work out okay. So um, that is cool. So, um, what we need to do now is go to, um, uh, we need to go to the, which one? Okay, so we, we're just going to start working through more of these to do's right so we'll, we'll get back to check for winner later on but I feel like right now like we've got this record move and switch player right 
Um, so we need to actually uh, switch the player. So this me method handles switching between players after each move. It must it determines who the current player is and then switches to the other player. And if you notice that um, the the player token wasn't changing properly, it was staying in the hearts. Although we we decided to use some different icons uh, for our players, we, we decided to use the remove sign and unchecked to get more of an X's and O's look. So. In order to make this work, we need to complete this switch player uh, class. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to make a conditional that checks to see if this current player is equal to player one. If so, then we're going to switch player two. If not, then we're going to switch player one. Okay. So if this current player equals 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 the three equals um, equals this dot player one. Uh, then we're going to say this dot current player equals this dot player two. Else, this dot current player equals this dot player one. Okay. And then um, we can work this other to do, which says set the class attribute on this dot current player token token dot set attribute um, to reflect the current player's token so that is going to be let's take a look at what this is in the index.html so currently that is just glyph icon glyph icon heart that's the default one right so that actually lets us know that what we need it to be um, we need to set the class uh, class attribute to, and then we're going to use a template literal here. So those are back ticks, and we're going to say glyph icon, and then glyph icon dash, and we're going to say this dot current player dot token. That's the value that we want to put in there, right? So we're going to save that, and now. We can get rid of these, and we should be able to see that icon shift when we hit start. So let's see if that happens. So this one should change now when we actually hit start, and it should match our icons that we're using. So we'll hit start game. Oh, it looks like we have a bug in our initialize. So let's fix that bug in our initialize. So we know that this is what we had to do before to set the player token. I think we need that line also to exist in our initialize move prompt. So we set the current player, and then after we do that, let's set the token attribute to be that. I bet this will fix it. So I'm going to refresh. And we're going to say start game. Oh, and it's X's move cool and then it's O's move and then X's move and O's move all right so we can see those icons shifting over here and that's um, that's really great so uh, we will now um, be able to uh, finish out more of the game so cool all right let's get rid of all of all these extra to do's that we find let's, let's get rid of some of these again okay these are done that's done. We set up all the tile listeners. All right. And uh, so now we need to actually record a move, right? Um, so that so we so that we can see those icons show up in the actual game board. So um, uh, we deleted some to do. So let's just make sure that we didn't make any backwards progress here. Um, all right, we got that. That looks all good. No errors over here. Okay, so let's get back to the editing here. So let's do this record move method now. Um, the uh, first thing to do is um, see it's going to update the this dot game state properties. Um, okay, so we're going to find the x y coordinates of the tile. We're going to claim that tile, and then we're going to set the class attribute of the tile to reflect which player has claimed it. So um, so what we need here is first of all to find a variable called tile x okay 
uh, that is a weird syntax. I'm going to stick with better JavaScript syntax and, <laughs> and make it tile x like that and say that is going to equal event.target.dataset.x right because the event target is the tile itself and then um, and and you notice that record move is actually getting that event object from the event listener so let tile y equal event.target.dataset.y excellent so then we're gonna claim this spot in the game state array for the player so that means um, this dot game state tile X tile Y so like we were looking at before we can access the individual tiles it's tile states tile data in the game state by using these XY coordinates and so um, so now we can set that to this dot current player dot token and so we'll just store the current player's token in there and it'll check against that that'll be fine so that array is going to change instead of the values being null they'll be you know whatever the token is x y x y x y um we could also be storing just the current player object in there uh and then you know if we wished uh either way would would work pretty well so um so then we could uh then we need to set the class on the event target to show the player's token so this dot um, set uh, or sorry not this event dot target dot set attribute class and then we need to make sure that we use um, the same classes that were used before so that's going to be th basically this same thing that we used in the tile listener um, and we're going to use the template literal again because here we want to say um, dollar sign curly braces this dot current player dot token just like we did uh, for the move uh, prompt and everything previously so um, so we're going to use that and the, the, the big change is that we, we're going to keep this tile class on here so so make sure that you don't forget to keep the tile class on the tile itself or else it'll it'll look weird but um but now we should have these moves being recorded in the game and we should see them reflected on the game board so let's go back to our web browser and let's test um, so here we go start game X is gonna move hey X made that move and then O is gonna move and O made that move and X is gonna move again and O and so we can do that but as you can tell there's nothing that's ever going to end the game now right even though X's should have moved um, we also don't have any protection for clicking on a place that somebody else already claimed so that is um, something else that we could add in as a as a good check there so while we are recording move um, let's just uh, let's add a little something up here Um, where we're going to check this we could actually really easily insert a check to verify so if you're looking for a stretch goal right in here you could put this line inside of a conditional and that conditional could um, return like return false and that would stop the processing if if this place has already been claimed and the way that you could tell it is that this value will be null until we reset it to something so if it's not null then it's already been claimed so keep that in mind that's a that's a free tip for your stretch goals um, but for now we're gonna carry on and uh, just get rid of these to do's here and then um, we are going to go uh, on into our checking for the winner because that's that's really the next step there so um, so uh, we need to um, let me see here so if we've gotten here we need to create a win event and dispatch it okay so let win event equal 
new event. This is um, how we create a new event object. And we add in the signal that it's going to send just as, as text. And then we do the same thing here. Um, or, or then we, we dispatch the event using the document.dispatch event. And we just give it that event object to dispatch. And it handles the rest for us. So that's awesome. And here's an example of returning in order to cease the, um, so if you return from one of these methods, then you don't process the rest of the code in the method. So here we know if we hit this spot, we, we want to stop processing anything else. But if we didn't hit that spot, then we want to process this down here. And this says create a new draw event that dispatches the signal draw. So um, we'll do that, a new event object that sends out draw and dispatch the draw event document dot dispatch event draw event oh, oh, oh. not in quotes just the object there draw event all right and that that will make those events happen so let's go ahead and remove these to do's really quick and Let's go add, let's create listeners and add console logs to see if we're actually um, going to be able to pick up these events successfully. So if we scroll back down to the bottom here, we see we need to add an event listener that listens for the win event signal. So we're going to say document dot add event listener win. And that is going to be another anonymous function to handle it. And first we can just console.log detected win event. And then it just can, can run game.show win screen to actually show that win screen at the end. Now, basically this same listener is the one that we're going to use down below here. So I'm just going to uh, paste it in here and change this to say draw. I say detected draw event. And this is just going to be show draw screen. So that's that's all that we need there um, in the event listeners. So let's go ahead and refresh and um, check out what what we can get here. If we just say if we just make a win really quick we see here detected win event awesome okay and if we keep on clicking we should be able to get it to give us a draw event also oh it won't give us a draw event because it's always going to detect the win event because there is a win event there so let's go ahead and refresh it and we'll make sure a draw event happens so And we can see here that it actually detected a draw event. This game is a draw at nine moves. So cool. Um, we've got that stuff all basically working. And so now we can go finish out just the show draw screen and show win screen. And we will basically have our game functional. So um, so the f in the show win screen, um, again, we can console.log now showing win screen. And it says that we need to change the class attribute on this dot win screen dot set attribute. So we're going to set that that class to be show, and then we're going to set the class attribute this dot um, winner token dot set attribute class. So this needs to show the winner's token, which is going to be the glyph icon. And then actually this is going to have to be a template literal so that we can access the this dot um, winner, right? Because it's going to be this dot winner is where the, the player who wins gets gets saved into when it when it checks for the winner. So we're going to say dollar sign this dot winner dot token 
because that is a player object that is going to have a token there. And then for the draw screen, we just need to show it because we don't have to show the tokens because we know that it's it's going to be um, anyone's game. So so this dot draw screen dot set attribute class show. So that's that's all that we have to do there. So we're going to get rid of our to do there and there and there. We'll save that. Um, we're going to get rid of these to dos and these to dos. And now we'll refresh, and we should be able to actually win a game here. So start game. Boom. 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 One. All right. And if we play again, no more moves. All right, so good. Everything's working pretty well. I do notice that our, our colors aren't changing, and so I think that we might have missed a style in our um, tile. So tile.played is what actually makes the colors change. So if we go to main.js here and we look in that um, uh, record move, so you can see here we're going to set the attribute. So if we just add here played and we save this, then we're going to add that class when we actually, so we refresh our code, hit start, and now they turn yellow when we actually play them. So that's good. No more moves. All right. So that, my friends, is everything in this assignment. Um, we have now completed all of the basic requirements. There are several opportunities for stretch goals. We've worked through several bugs. We've figured out how to enhance our code with um, uh, adding different classes to things, being able to change things around in terms of the HTML and the CSS and stuff. Hopefully all of this has come together okay for you, uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed this process of putting together this code. This is the biggest project so far. It's almost 300 lines of code, and uh, you've you've managed to come, come through it all um, really well. So we're going to remove all of these to-dos, and then we're going to deploy, you know, uh, push it up and deploy it in the same way that we typically do. So I will go ahead and um, show how we do that. Um, even before I finish removing these to-dos, I can get back to that later. I'm going to uh, end my web server here. And I'm going to say git status. And all that I've modified is the main.js. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to say completed project. I'm going to push it to the origin, and then I'm going to make my GH pages branch so it will deploy it. I'm going to check out dash b GH dash pages. Then I'm going to say put git push origin dash u. Uh, sorry, git push dash u origin GH dash pages colon GH dash pages. That is the command to push it the local branch to the remote branch and set up a linkage between the two. And so now I can go to my personal uh, my personal uh, GH, GH pages uh, domain and I can see that the browser game is there and ready to play. So I can start the game and I have X's and O's going on like traditional there we go. So that, my friends, is everything for the Tic-Tac-Toe game, the Watch 3020 browser game project. It's been a really long walkthrough. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're having fun working on these projects. And I look forward to seeing everybody's Tic-Tac-Toe games up online. Take care, everybody. Have a good time coding. Bye-bye.